This is a Bali 54 catamaran made in France, known for its innovative design, but it does sacrifice a bit of performance for that design feature. I was able to take a look at a brand new 2024 Bali 54 at the Miami International Boat Show, and I took a complete tour for you. All right, this is a brand new Bali 5.4. I have not been on this one, I've been on a 48. I really enjoyed that, but uh, it's made by Katana. We're gonna take you up here. Got a nice dinghy lift on the back with the kind of the scissors, the whole hydraulic thing. I like that a little better than the ones that use line that wrap up. Uh, and then you can still act, like I said on another boat before, you can still access the davit or back here a little bit so you can get everything tied away instead of having to be on the platform while you're doing it, which is nice. Uh, and then coming up to the seating area. now. It's up right now, but one of the unique things about the Bali is that this door up here closes all the way down. So this is closed off, this window shuts. So this whole entire space is enclosed off if you want it to be. So if it's hot or it's cold, you want to get the air conditioning going, you can open, you can close all this up. And it's, I mean, look at the amount of space that is in this salon, because the whole thing just opens up and I mean, wow. Just, uh, you know, you can throw a hell of a party in here. And I love it. Your door walks straight through off to this bow. I mean, really, look at this. And the seating area up here, you know, so that's the unique thing about Bali's is they don't have a trampoline. Um, the reason they say for that is that, you know, fiberglass has come a long way in the last few years. It's a lot lighter than it used to be. And so they didn't want that much weight up front on a catamaran. They didn't want it to like dive into waves. Well, now that fiberglass is a lot better, it's not as heavy. now. Another reason is so you get wave slap. If you're in big heavy seas, um, you know, you want the wave to kind of break through the, the trampoline rather than hit and splash up on the bottom of the hull. I've sailed a few of these bollies before and I've never really felt that was an issue. Um, so, uh, but I've not been in really big seas in it. I've only been in like, you know, four to five foot seas. This one does have a bow sprit on it for a uh, furling system. Uh, furling, a, well, that's just on a, that's an interesting system there. I guess they would just have a, Hmm. I'm not sure how they have that rigged up, but anyway. Uh, but coming back into the galley, you have this uh, window pass through, so you can get a lot. I mean, just look how much air. So if you, like it's 80 degrees out here and it's really kind of cool in here. So you have all this window, the door open, all this, so you have a lot of airflow moving th right, right through here. Uh, U-shaped galley, so you can kind of hang on to the, to the railings in inclement weather. Uh, lots of counter space, lots of storage space up here chart plotter over here. And another thing the Bollies always have is a full size refrigerator. Um, so, I mean, I really like the way this is set up and then a settee off the back. So really good use of space here. Uh, and it's only a 54 foot boat, but you get a lot of space out of it. I'll take you down onto the port side first. I don't even know what, I've never been in this boat before, so I don't know what's what. Turn forward, you have a VIP cabin kind of raised and lifted up with its own shower kind of separate. And then, I'm assuming this is access to the forward. Yeah, so the forward, you would go up there into the four peak. So you can, which is kind of nice. I like having access to that because now then you can, if you want to get something out of there while you're underway and it's kind of splashy, you don't have to. Where is that? Oh, that okay. And then stepping back, this uh, a double bed configuration. Um, you know, be for kids or crew or whatever you want to do. And then it has its own head as well with a dry shower or dry head with a you know separate shower so not bad there all right we'll come across over to the port side it leaves me to believe that on the aft end back there because this is so short there's another cabin you access from the from the aft but we'll check that out in a minute uh come down we'll turn forward basically the same kind of setup as the other side they got this flow through hatch already open so that you can see that this would be a crew quarter or storage wow okay so that bed turns uh, lateral along the boat and you got its own head so this would be if you got a captain or maybe you just have a little bit of overflow i guess but that's really nice how they have that and then separate shower keeping it a dry head we'll come back aft here uh, this i'm assuming would be the master cabin because it's so large um, square bed which is nice with the head on this side aft and then the shower and does it have its own Okay, it does have its own sink. I was worried about that. So head and sink. And then over here, forward, you do have a shower and its own sink. So it's kind of nice. You can have like his and hers sinks if you really wanted to. Um, and then hanging lockers, lots of storage over here. I'm assuming this is all storage as well. That'd be nice having that much storage. I would put 
a washer dryer in here somewhere um, but nice having all this storage all right and we can access this cabin from the back but the door's closed so i'm going to access it from i'm going to go around back through the salon uh let's check out see if there's another ah uh, there is another cabin right here i will open this door let's see here if it's already open nope i gotta open the hatches and there we go and okay a little bit smaller cabin but it is another cabin so this is like a what is it a six that's a five cabin layout so smaller bed here but it does have its own wet head so not bad uh, i'm i've always been a fan of the use of space on a bali okay so here we go you got access to the flybridge from the starboard side and you've got access to the flybridge from the port side. I like that. It'd be nice if they kind of had a, a central option where you could go up to, but I understand that space is an issue. So coming up here to the flybridge, um, another thing Bali's always had is a nice big flybridge. I like it. Um, plenty of seating area. I like that they have a split table. So you can still have dinners and stuff up here, but you can still walk through to get good access to the seating. I hate it when they have big tables and nobody ever sits in the middle because you can't get to it. But, you know, they have a day bed back here. Um, I don't see any solar on this boat, but, you know, it's probably an option. I mean, I'd make some solar back here, maybe put something off over the dinghy. And then coming up here to, it has a little refrigerator up front and the helm station, again, using Raymarine. I guess Raymarine is the cheapest option, so that's why they put it everywhere. So from the helm, I can see the port bow, uh, starboard bow, real pro no problem. The starboard uh, side, and I can see the starboard uh, stern i cannot see the port stern um it is what it is that's all that's what you're going to do with a boat like this size and then you know a hard top wow nice a nice hard top going all around and this will all enclose for bad weather and you can get a lot of space so uh there you go pretty impressive okay my thoughts on the bali 44 i love it love the space um i don't know the price on them offhand maybe i'll be flashing it up there but i just the design of it i love i really love how they're doing that i can understand you may not want to take this boat around the world it's probably more of a coastal sailor you know because of the no trampoline and all that and it's probably a bit top heavy and because it's got this big fly bridge you know it doesn't have a whole lot of sail right because it's got a self-tacking jib and then you have this huge fly bridge so you lose a lot of mainsail too so that's just the trade-offs there's no such thing as a perfect boat you want the comfort or do you want the speed you can't have both um, that being said I am a little on the fence on the quality of Bali's. Um, I've been on the last boat I sailed was a Bali 48. I thought the quality was quite nice. Um, you know, uh, I didn't have any problems with the boat. I've sailed other Bali's. I've sailed a Bali 40 and a Bali 42, and I thought they were junk. Um, the stainless was already rusting. The electronics were already having problems, and I didn't just like the build quality. Maybe the bigger boats, they do a little bit better quality. So um, all in all, I think if you're just looking to put something in charter, or do some coastal cruising, you don't plan on going around the world, maybe just a little bit of the Caribbean or something, not a bad option. I'd give the Bali, oh man, I'd give it a B plus. All right, let's go to the, the Bali 54, I'd give it a B plus. Go check out another one.